What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode. I'm Ruggle. This is Sig. It's fight week, SummerSlam week, wrestling week, whatever you want to call it. We're going to get down to it, talk about the upcoming pay-per-view. I refuse to call it anything else. Well, it's you're not paying, no matter what to view it. You're paying to watch it. It's a premier live event because it is still, not still a paid. traditional pay-per-view. You still pay to watch it. It's on streaming services and not pay-per-view channels. I have 60 bucks. At most, or at minimum, five. True. Still pay-per-view. Whatever. The pay-per-view premier live event in question is <laughs> WWE SummerSlam. There are eight. Um, at, there are eight matches as of this recording, which is literally like three, four days before SummerSlam takes place in Detroit. So I mean, I don't see them adding any extra matches on Friday Night SmackDown. No, I mean, all they're doing now is just nine matches. Yeah, I mean, they're taking matches away already. So they did last night. Yeah, take away. Yeah, I guess that's right. This still Becky says, and Trish. Let's see, is she still on this card? It's not the one I'm looking at, but no, same. This card was not has not been updated for two weeks, and it doesn't even show Trish. Hmm. Hmm. So they were saying also that there's a that they were wanting to have or plan to have Rhea and uh, Raquel, but He's Rhea's going around fucking again. breaking everybody. Yeah. So she killed Liv and. Raquel had a bad she, knee or whatever, she so didn't kill it, but she can't pretty fucking damn close. So <laughs> well, let's let's get rock and roll into this. Let's uh I'm using Bleacher Report. Um is probably one of the more reputable ones that I've been able to trust. And they're not too far off with like their predictions and all that. So but starting off the first match which this this makes no bloody sense like there's no there's been no build up i think it's only been announced a week maybe a week and a half but the SummerSlam battle royal <laughs> you know the only reason they're doing this right it's supposedly supposedly for la night supposedly That's a death. but this it could also be, be another screw over of la night and make it so where the fans are even more pissed off that they keep undermining LA Knight. Where is I mean person? it's got it's got to be it's got to be LA Knight. They don't even have the participants announced yet. They have like, nothing. That's the what the first two. That's all they have like the Sheamus and LA Knight. The but, only two I'm aware. Like who else is in this and why are you having it and cuz I mean they've already said that uh, I've read that LA Knight is supposed to have a segment. Obviously this is going to be the segment. Um did you watch your your recap of of Raw? <laughs> your Hulu version? Yeah, I watched it today. <laughs> like a recap version. I mean, it's, that's an honest uh, depiction of it, but it's an hour and a half long. Uh, it's an hour and twenty four minutes. Thank you. Oh, it's not even an hour and a half long then. It's not an hour and a half. So I mean, I don't the have big expectations. It's like four minutes, no, I mean, five minutes. So. Very I don't have big expectations power. for this match at all. I have I have LA Knight winning it in hopes that he gets something. Um, I don't but even yeah. know what the point of what does yeah. the winner get? Yeah, this is like the Andre Bow Bow Royale. Like, what? What? Why are we having this? Are we just having Bow yeah. Royals out every other pay per view now? Could this be me? Know. But I definitely feel like we're. Well, having I mean, it's Bow Royals more often right now. And I get it's a great way to showcase a bunch of talent without having to de- have a dedicated match to all these sounds. So you can put 30 plus men or 20 plus men or whatever in here and everybody kind of gets the moment. But mm-hmm. I mean, uh, according to uh, Bleacher's report, it says. This match is likely to include 
competitors that have not been announced on both brands, such as AJ Styles, Karrion Cross, Sheamus. Sheamus was announced on SmackDown. Dominic mm-hmm. Mysterio, and many more. My so. guess is that they'll release it on SmackDown. Is that they'll say, oh, here's the lineup for the Battle Royale tomorrow. So I'm assuming that's going to start off the entire thing. I don't know. If they want to make this... I mean, this will kick off SummerSlam, I'm, I'm sure of that, but if they wanted to get a little bit of, like, pop to this would be to uh, call up some legends who are still somewhat active, even if it's, like, John Cena. But I'm going to mention this right now because I'll mention it later, too. Randy Orton is supposed to be making his return tomorrow uh, on SummerSlam, so... It's Which very true. He is supposed a to a good way for him to kind of just come back and screw over yeah. LA Knight and not win that one <laughs> too. So, I mean, do you do you have Randy Orton come back? And this is a perfect way to bring him back. He's going to get a huge pop once his music hits, comes out. You know, everybody's going to be shocked and stunned. Riddle will probably be in it as well. I'm assuming because he doesn't have a match. No, nope. he, he doesn't have a match. Ludwig. So he'll be more likely be in this. Battle Royale match, if they want to bring him back, cool, it makes sense. There's no other reason for him to come out. I also read that Bray Wyatt is supposed to come out, too. Yep. And have some type of feud with um, Brock or Cody. Yeah, the supposedly makes... the winner of Brock or Cody. I don't... But we can get into that one like, when the match comes yeah. up. That's a, that's a whole um, fucking subject in of itself. So I think, I think we're in agreement, so we want or we think LA Knight's going to win this? Look, and with the possibility I, of Randy I, Orton? I want, L- <laughs> I want LA Knight to win. But I get the very sneaking suspicion that this is going to be another screw-over type match where it just pisses all the fans off. Because every time he has been screwed over so far, the fans get rowdier and rowdier, louder and louder, and he has more and more presence everywhere he does he has a helpful presence but i mean ellie knight doesn't have his presence everywhere and i don't know if you're how much you've been on tiktok as of late but like his his uh mashups would be the best way it's not like his directly but people putting la knight's yeah into songs oh yeah i've (laughs) yeah i've seen plenty of them so yeah, I've seen, that, I've seen that. I mean, you have that, and you have everybody calling uh, Stone Rock. Yes. Mashup of Stone Cold and the Rock, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's getting a a massive pop. So for him not to win, not a big surprise. But the thing is, he's the only participant. Like we know, hundred <laughs> percent. I'm not saying it's a tall tale, but it's it's kind of gives it away. <laughs> uh, speaking of TikTok, I do. I'm wondering if Baron Corbin will be in the battle royale because that chef oh, yeah. or whatever said he's going to be a SummerSlam. So I wonder if they incorporate anything of Baron Corbin's TikToks in with what's going on. Now he's talked. I haven't seen anything else since that one. I think I sent it to you. No, I've seen I haven't so seen many. anything else. He, he did a, of, he about did, it being there. Did, he do uh of him being there yeah i yeah i think because it was corbin dressed up as a uh, chef react or whatever duetting yep. his own yeah he's like don't worry i'll see you at SummerSlam." <laughs> he's like mm-hmm. why is this, now, this so is good just, why is this it's just so funny good? and i think that's why i like Baron corbin even more even though he's dropped his his whole gimmicks and everything else and trying to go something uh, his own style I mean, burn is his whole thing now. Yeah. So, I mean, at the Great American Bash, is that the one that was Sunday? Yeah. Yeah. So that one was, I mean, it was an okay match, but I'm hoping that he has something in that there's something in there with that because that just shows that they're paying attention to his TikToks and acknowledging that he has something I of a personality. They, I don't think they can avoid TikTok, like, between LA Knight and Corbin, I don't, I don't think they can. And um, even on Monday Night Raw, they talked about Cody Rhodes finally joining TikTok. So, I mean, yep. you can tell they're 
finally pushing a different social media uh, avenue. Yeah. But it, well, Corbin's more entertaining to watch now. Because of the TikToks? Yeah. Yeah, I'll agree. Definitely. So. It's definitely. It just shows a different side of him. It actually has a personality. It's helped him more than anything. Yeah. I mean, and speaking of his match with Gable Stevenson, the fact that he got booed so much worse than Baron Corbin. Speaks oh, yeah. To, speaks so much volume. <laughs> I mean, and it's like I texted you. I was like, oh, good. A reused gimmick. Like, it's it's Kurt Angle. I mean, it's it's so blatant that it's ridiculous. Yeah, it was so like you're coming but, out in the single. You're kissing they, the, the they, gold medal. They set that up a couple of years ago since he got announced. When oh no! I, I understand GM it. Him or whatever. Like they, they, we knew this was going to be his gimmick years ago. Yeah, I mean, and I get it. I have no problem with it. But you already have a Kurt Angle style in Chad Gable. Yeah, and you are. I mean, they have so many gimmicks that are the same between NXT and main roster. I mean, yeah. even Chad Gable and the whatever the university in NXT is, they're the exact same thing. Oh, yeah, I mean the uni- whatever it is, and then. Their their whole thing. They even had the jackets like the university did. I mean, so I mean, the gimmicks are works one way, replicated. Uh yeah. When they're trying to make it other show stand on its own, but I mean, there's so many similar gimmicks that they're using. It's crazy, and they yeah. have an AJ Lee 2.0, and what's her name? Yeah. Uh, I I fucking saw. I want to say it. I, I don't I, even know her name. I know who you're talking about. But I'm terrible with the NXT roster. There's like maybe a handful of them I know their names and can line them up. I think yeah, like, I mean I've seen her a couple of times, but she's a blatant ripoff of what AJ Lee was. Yep. There's there's Identical. quite a few. So, but we we can talk about NXT on a whole different episode too. And talk about the good shit, the bad shit that's going on there. But let's stick to Summer Slam. The next match would be Logan Paul versus Ricochet. And it's already been deemed the most viral match ever that has been used by those two probably like five or six times during their little fucking talk off on Monday. You're right. This is going to be the most viral match ever. It should be the most viral match. It's going. Yeah, we get we get. Stop saying the word viral, though. Like. Not great. Never really liked that term. But I think of diseases, not millions of views well, that's what the internet is it's a disease I, it, I mean you're not wrong. not wrong i don't know if i really expect too much out of this match i do expect a lot of high flying i mean the fact that ricochet did the flip front flip out of the ring and landed it I'm pretty oh. sure it shocked the shell logan paul when he did it too well i um I, I, do you think i guess do you think this is going to be a multi i know you hate these but do you think this is going to be a multi-event um Event. Like a trifecta? Storyline? Yeah. Not necessarily a trifecta, but maybe. I don't know. I hope not, because I don't want to see Logan Paul get stuck with Ricochet. But he called out Ricochet via his fiance, the announcer. Yeah. That's the only reason why I brought it up, because you typically don't yeah. bring outside sources unless this is going to go somewhere. I mean, it could it could go that route. It probably wouldn't wouldn't hurt him to try and develop a, a feud, and have him be around a little bit more because they're they're going to keep him as much as they can to shine and build him build him as much as possible. But I don't know if it's going to work with Ricochet or not. I mean, it's a he's, lot to keep up with with Ricochet. Yeah, and he's only had like multi match storylines. He's only had one. He's only had like five or six matches, but that was with the Miz where he fought a long. He tagged with the Miz. Got betrayed, and then he fought them. It's like, there you go. So that's his longest storyline. Mm-hmm. So, and this but, one's gone on since was it Mania, when they had their Royal coast Rumble. to coast shit. Royal was it Rumble? Rumble? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, they went side to side and met in the middle. Yeah, and then they had their so shit at a uh, extreme extreme rules. It might have been. Yeah. Where he just took the table straight to the head because he didn't help Ricochet flip. 
they land. Oh yeah. Really. Yep. So, but, but who do you have? Because I, I've seen way too much about this going around social. I media. have Ricochet. I have Ricochet running this over Logan Paul. I'm with you. However, it's kind of almost unanimous that everyone thinks Logan Paul is going to win. It's where he can finally get his first win, and it's not going to hurt Ricochet too much. He's already kind of at the jobber level. Ricochet. Yes, but I just I I don't see I I hate the word jobber. I think it's uh, I do too, but that's the most. He's a, I mean, he's another one to do a stepping stone for Logan Paul. But I mean, Ricochet has been around for a long time as well. They just don't and know how to use him utilize. and utilize him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The IC I mean, they had him as the IC. Quick. Yeah, and he never defended it in a pay per view. Not always the night before. Yeah, it was always, always. always on SmackDown or whatever, and never had it. Um, I must stick with Ricochet. I, I, I don't want Logan Paul to win it. If they, I, if he loses, let him make it. Let his character get darker, and go that route because he's he's too fucking shiny with all that yellow and other shit. But that's that is him. Oh well, no, I think Logan's gonna win. So I want Ricochet to win. But unfortunately, with Logan having yet to have a single win underneath his belt, mm -hmm. he's set for a win, and this would make the most most sense is to have him go against Ricochet and win. Maybe do a three P. They don't need it. They could literally just have him beat Ricochet, and then I leave at that. Possibly. I mean, it's. It could be an entertaining match, but I don't see it being a long match. Either. Money in the bank, not extreme rules. Money in the bank. Was it money in the bank? That was the table shot. But... Oh, that's right. Okay. Okay. I think this is probably that this match honestly has the chance to kind of be like a hidden gem type, like really great. Because they're both super athletic, they're both super high flyers. But if Logan same. Paul can hit the timing that Ricochet yeah. has, then yes, it can that's be. The, I that's mean, the biggest, biggest he's thing. He's got to be able to keep up with him. And Logan Paul can do it. The dude is athletic as hell. He's shown it. He's proved it. Uh, he just had that one that one mess up when they were trying to do the, the, camera, the, the move. Yeah, that's what it was. When they tried to do that one, but he... Went with it, landed on his head, but whatever. So, I mean, if he can keep up with the timing and doesn't have to be carried, which I don't think he'll be carried too much, um, it may be decent. I don't see it being a match of the night. No, not not match of the night, but definitely like a hidden gem of looking back and like, oh, oh this yeah. is actually really good. It's one of the better mm -hmm. card, match cards of the night. Mm -hmm. The next one, I have absolutely no hope for. At all, and that's uh, Ronda Rousey versus Shayna Baszler. And uh, right now, this is very likely Rousey's last match as she is on her way out indefinitely. Yes. Yep, so. I agree. Her last match, passing of the torch, or whatever, since I mean, even though Shayna's been around longer, um, Ronda, I mean, just in the interviews that they've had. And I, the overall emotional crying and all everything else, and it's like, okay, cool. You don't Just believe it? Kind of killing your, kind of killing your characters, but whatever. She's supposed to show um, her some more sensitive side of saying that's how hard this is. Is she the biggest badass on earth, and and Sheena is that important to her that it's making her emotional? Yeah, I don't buy it, but you know, I don't, I don't. Okay. Ron is I mean, not that great of a storyteller either. She's very flat. In and so it's many MMA rules match, so I'm curious to see how MMA it really gets. Is it going to be straight up punches? Or is it just going to be let's roll on the ground and grapple? 
Well, they because can. if they're going to go back to UFC those, style, you, you well, can, yes, they can. But I'm curious can to see how UFC. far. It's I understand going... that, but I'm saying, how far will WWE go to allow MMA style? I mean, if they're well, going to go back to the old school I... where Butterbean was in it, and they were doing shit like that, getting dudes knocked out on Raw. They're great. I mean, it's it's going to be a grappler match, and it's going to be it's going to end in submission. That's more than likely. Yes. Well, not even more than likely. They've hinted so much. Uh, ask Shannon how many times she's tapped out. Ask Shannon how many times I apply that on bar in under a minute. Ask Shannon how many like it's so many uh, statements revolving around the arm bar and her and Shannon oh, tapping. Yeah. So it almost like if it's not a submission, it doesn't really put Shayna over who's going to win. Rhonda has no use to winning at all. And her losing I mean, no one gives a shit, honestly, if Ronda wins or lose. Nobody so. cares if Shayna wins. Oh, yeah. Nobody's, yeah. I don't see too many people invested in this match. I mean, if it's MMA rule style, maybe it'll be entertaining. Maybe. But I should have um, fight pit like Seth and Riddle. Oh, that would that would have been interesting, too. I, don't, I mean, I don't know. Like, this is not a. A, a great match set up by any means. Um, Shane is also one of the one of the one of those who was supposed to be put over so many years ago. I think even mm-hmm. before COVID, and then she got buried. I mean, she was supposed to be put over again, and she got buried. Like they can't commit to her at all. So I'm hoping they're finally building her up. I mean, she's gotten better on the mic. Yeah. Well, we'll give her they, that. They actually gave her time on the mic, so. Yeah. But I think she's, if anyone is going to be set up to dethrone Rhea Ripley, Shayna makes the most sense, as she is that baddest bitch right now. Mm-hmm. And, like, sure, Raquel Rodriguez makes sense, because she's also super strong. But she's not ready for the title. They can give it to Shayna and kind of just have her get cashed in on by Money in the Bank winner. And show will she held title? Or she's going to now have this whole gimmick or aura of I'm better than Ronda. Ronda only held the title three times. I am going to hold it five or six times. Or shit, her longest reign was X days. Mine is Y days. Mm-hmm. But that's the unfortunate side effect to this match. Is it's going to kind of set up that I made Ronda leave. I'm the baddest bitch now. And they had to either run this all the way into the end zone. Or it's going to be the biggest waste of time, effort, and money put into somebody. Mm-hmm. Possibly. I mean, I think they they can do something with her. And hopefully be successful with it. I don't think that she gets buried again like last time, but hopefully it, it works out for her or she can do something. Or the time before that. Or the time before that time. Yeah. All right. And the next match. This is the three-peak event. It's for sure the final one. It's not going to be the five five peak. So you don't have to worry about me saying that. But the final final story or chapter in the story, Cody Rhodes versus Brock Lesnar. And the fact that this is not just like any stipulated match kind of annoys me. There's not or like so far, there's no special matches at all. Yes. What well, is the MMA, MMA rules? So it's, going to, be real, it's going to be special. real fighting versus somewhat stage choreographed fighting. Okay. I gotcha. Battle Royale. Okay. So there's one. Uh, there's nothing else on the match card that would be, you know, ooh, triple threat. Ooh. Tribal tribal warfare. Ooh. None of those actually mean shit. <laughs> we'll get to the tribal one a, later, but yeah. It's a no DQ. So uh this is a rubber match. For what? The whole damn story, that, that, I mean, that, lack of storyline is pointless. I can keep saying this is this is a rubber match. He challenged him to a rubber match. And like, it's, it's, it's... 
That's There's no, the storyline is pointless. I I hate I don't like it. This it's is mimicking nuts. John Cena's story. It's of what? When he lost what at story? WrestleMania years ago, his redemption arc story was literally the night after WrestleMania or the Monday after WrestleMania. He came on the air. He got attacked by Brock Lesnar. They did this repeat, and then John Cena went on to go win the world war world title shortly after. So that's all this is setting up. It's setting up Rhodes to win, as he's going to win, and then he's that's going if Lesnar doesn't paralyze him, because Cody gets hurt every time he wrestles. His guy, the guy's left arm has to be hanging on by a, a thread of muscle because he can never move it. You give it two years, and he's not going to have a left arm. He's going to wrestle one-armed. He's going to amputate his left arm and go on from there. Yeah, it's definitely not a sell at all. It's not fake. No. I don't I don't. Th- I, I honestly think he's hurt all the damn time. I don't think it's a sell at all. I think he's hurt. I think yeah, the dude is no. legit hurt every time he does anything. I mean, that's a fair point. We can't prove it. Very quiet. But this is also the match that's going to be Bray Wyatt's involvement. And here's kind of the bad part is I've read a lot of quote rumors and leaks, which mean jack shit, but they're all hinting at the fiend is being brought back because that's yep. what Vince McMahon wants. Mm-hmm. Which I Bray Wyatt has already said the fiend's not coming back. He's not going back to the character. He's in the interviews where he's like, if I'm done with the character, I'm done with the character. I just want to move on. So for him to go back, I think would be detrimental to whatever fucking push he has. So. I mean, it's been it's been a year, right? Since he when was that Mountain Dew match? He, Against LA Knight. Rules, so October. Okay, so I mean, we're a couple months off, but I mean, shit. The dude hasn't had a match since then. He's been, they keep saying he has injury or illness, but I've also read it's been, you know, mental health or whatever, trying to figure out. I've read injuries, whatever's gone in there. Um, Injury, mental health, illness. Family issues. Mm-hmm. Just had a kid. I was like, "What the fuck?" There's so many. Yeah, there's no, there's no, I think anybody knows. Nobody has a clue. Oh. What the hell's going on? Uh, let's see. When was his last match? I want to say it was Extreme Rules. That was yeah. That Wyatt returned to WWE in late the pitch 2012. 2012. 2012. Sorry, 2022. <laughs> I'm reading like a bunch of shit. My bad. Uh, February 10th, 2023. Was his last match. Oh, was that really this year? Yeah, okay. That was the black, uh, pitch black. I feel like it was like a year ago. It feels like it was there forever. Well, they don't okay, talk so... about him. They don't hype him up. They have no vignette about him. They don't have any programming or anything. he's just gone. Well, so... that's what the, the dark character of him, they always, they always want him just to kind of randomly show up when and if he ever does. Oh, I think there's still a good chance he doesn't even show up. There's a very so, good chance he doesn't show up. Like, I mean, ninety percent chance he doesn't show up. So I mean, they're what are they going to have? Cody Rhodes? I mean, they're going to play on the nightmare part of it now, and then have I mean, that because that makes the most sense logically. Then but he would no, have they to won't be, do it because <laughs> that would be the perfect thing for the fiend if that's what they're going to do. But everyone who's okay, the story arc so far with those who face the fiend. Their characters change for the worse. I mean, they become more dark and broody or evil or bad guy. So, like, Seth Rollins lost to the Fiend and he became basically the Messiah shortly later. And he had all the disciples and he he took Ray's eye out. And, you know, he went to a very, very dark moment. Uh, Randy Orton just got crazy. Er. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you would too if you took a fireball to the face. Nah. You don't know my life. Okay, so when we see each other, I'm going to have a fireball mechanical thing right on my wrist. And when I see you, I'm just going, hey, 
<laughs> the only way you'll know it's coming is I may just go, I took it! <laughs> I'll be able to dodge it because I'm used to it. Fireballs come at me all the time. Dodge, dodge left. Dodge Fuck, other left. <laughs> Damn military training. I didn't have time to hold up my fingers. I mean, this the Rhodes and Lesnar match was one of those, like, it's either going to be really good or it's going to be subpar. And that's just because Lesnar this year, I feel like, has not had a bad match. But Cody, on the other hand, with how injury prone he is, like he, his match are his matches are entertaining. They very they're very much eye catching. Love watching them, but at the same time, going uh, okay. It leaves you wanting more missing. when he wrestles, as of right now. Yeah, something's missing. Something like relying way too much on the audience singing his song and not enough on everything else, but just something. I I like Cody Rhodes. I like his character. I liked him in AEW New Japan. Ring of Honor, I like Cody Rhodes. But something with his WWE run just feels like it's it's missing an element. And maybe that's where the fiend comes into play and he 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 does go down maybe. the nightmare a- avenue. But Cody Rhodes is way too babyface right now. He needs yeah. to get rid of the Cody cutter. I can't stand that move. It makes it's it just doesn't make any sense at all. It's 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 just a childish move. <laughs> it is. I want to see you do it. It's about as bad as the six one nine. Like no, okay, it's no, just no, hold the, on, hold on. The current six one nine, yes. The like the old school where he actually would do the six one nine and he jumped from top rope looked so much more impressive and cooler and more amazing to watch than this current one of him. He's going to dial it up. Maybe he climbs a turnbuckle. Maybe he just gets back in the ring. Like, it's just... I get Ray Mysterio's old. I understand. Dude's, what, 50? I'll just Ray. Something like that. But, I mean, yeah. the fact that when he goes and the, the well, guy has to lay on the middle rope, old. and then you have to... I mean, then he oh. goes and spins around and kicks him in the face. He's barely older than you. How old is he? He's 48. Oh, he's... At that point, you're 50. Remember that. Remember that. I've been told that. Oh, you're, you're, you're 40? Oh, yeah, you're 50 now. Fuck. Okay. Doesn't work that way, but okay. You don't get all the years in between. It's just yeah, decade no. markers <laughs> at this point. <laughs> yeah, now it's 40, 50, 60. I'm going to make it to 100, hopefully. Six yeah, more years. Yeah. <laughs> Should be good. That's all it takes. All it takes. But, I mean... I don't have high hopes for this match, but at the same time, I also don't see them bringing back the Fiend or bring back Bray Wyatt, especially the Fiend, and Randy Orton. I think because that one of them's gonna mask the other one, because Bray, like, what, what show is Bray on? Is he on SmackDown or is he on Raw? He wasn't drafted. Oh yeah, that's right, him and. Randy weren't drafted at all. No, because they, they were out. Like, they weren't even mentioned. So they're technically free agents at that point. Yeah, so right. it can go either way. But I I wouldn't see a problem if, if Orton shows up in the in the Battle Royale and then The Fiend shows up in... And just wins Rose versus LA Knight. <laughs> and, then, and then, you know, Bray or Fiend or whatever shows up somehow, oddly, for Cody Rhodes Lesnar... I just don't. Well, he's going after Rhodes because Lesnar has mentioned several times he will not go. He will not work with Bray Wyatt. Yeah, he does not care for the theatric matches. Yep. Now, which that's fine. Whatever. Good I, thing. Also, I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't really make sense for him to go after Cody either. But what the fuck do we know? Not a lot. That's that's the answer to that question. Not a lot. How much? Oh, and then your favorite match of the night, the Intercontinental Championship match. Your favorite, Gunther versus Drew McIntyre. Who had a decent match 
last night against Chad Gable. Gable, you know, the whole, he said he could beat him in five minutes. Obviously, did, that didn't happen. Gable went through and looked impressive. His suplex hurt my back watching him do it. It, it hurt um, my back when he suplexed uh, Ivan. <laughs> or Ivar, yeah. whatever. I was like, oh, that's a big dude. Oh, my back. <laughs> <laughs> And it's I mean, I didn't even do it. The fact that how tiny he is too. I didn't realize how small he was. He's your height, isn't he? And, ah, fuck you. He's <laughs> he's not a big dude at all. But I mean, if you stand next to Otis too, he's, and Otis isn't that oh. that tall either. I'm taller than Chad Gable. <laughs> Job. He's only five eight. He's still taller than you by like four inches, but yeah, but he's he's got he's got a lot. Going for him, but that match looked good. Gunther, well, it's whatever. Gunther, um, it's good. I just want Drew McIntyre to just fucking no, kick his won't. face in and beat yeah. this over. No, no, because as of today, Gunther is at 417 days and Honky Tonk Man is at 453, so he still has just shy of 40 days left. No, no, he's, no, he's, no, 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 no. I, I know, I know. We've gone over this in multiple podcast episodes about WWE, about pay per view slash premier live events. We've said it numerous times. Gunther's boring as fuck to watch. He's not entertaining. And as much as we both want Drew McIntyre to win, and he should win, they're going. Triple H is going for the longest reigns. So it's what's going to happen. Unfortunately, Gunther will reign supreme. They could definitely do a 3 P event where Drew takes off of him. And he still is able to claim long as reigning IC. Maybe. I, mean, I just want Drew to fucking beat him. I'm not, I'm not fucking arguing with you. I've, I've told you. I want. I, just want I don't want Gunther to win at all, but we have no saying that. He literally has 36 more days as of this recording. So, what? Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So minus four more days. 32 days. When the uh, event happens at SummerSlam. So he has a month left to hold the title. That's it. So they could definitely do a repeat, a three day or a three peat, whatever you want to call it. And Possibly. So where, so where you know? Well, they take it off of now. Yeah, you have payback on September second. That's not quite a month out. I don't get why. Why? Why Gunther? Why? What is so intriguing? Do you want to have him as your longest reign? He's going to be the face of the company here shortly. How? How can you put... How? I don't understand any way how he could be the face of the company. He's uh, not... He, he's boring as shit. Here's the thing. I, and, and the problem with watching things on TV is they definitely do pipe in cheers and boos to make it more believable. But a, oh, lot, yeah. of, a lot of time, especially like TikTok, and reels and stories and shorts. When I watch anything with like Gunther in a live match, it's either dead silence or it's cheering for the other. other oh, yeah. Member. I mean, it's I've... not it's not Gunther. So like we watch Gunther on on uh, Raw and Smackdown or Raw. Sorry, you'll definitely hear boo. But that's it. You won't hear fuck you, Gunther. You suck going to like it's just it's very generic negative feedback mm-hmm. and they're pushing like he's he's going to be the face once he drops the IC he's going after Seth. It is just what it is. You hate it, I hate it. We don't have a say in it. I don't believe that one. That's a, that's why I can't I can't get behind that one. There's no way. The dude has no personality to be the face of a company. No charisma. But they can build him up because he used to be a chunky dude. He used to be a yeah, big, big dude. And now he's yep. slender and cut. So, or not cut, but he's slender. So, 
I, I would love for Drew to win. He will. He'll win. He, he will. will. That's what I'm going with. Drew McIntyre wins it. I want to go with Drew too, but unfortunately, Gunther wins. Drew McIntyre wins. And when we and when we watch SummerSlam live on Twitch, maybe kick that two guys one game pad. I, I'm gonna unfortunately have to be like, "I told you, bitch," and be very upset. <laughs> And it'll be probably the only time you watch a whole match of Gunther without scrubbing through it. Possibly. Hell, you may even just be like, all right, Sig, I'll be back. Where the fuck did he go? <laughs> His match is over. Oh, yeah, no, I had to just go get food. Fuck this. Fuck it all. I'm done. <laughs> I don't even care anymore. Good night. So, I mean, Gunther wins. He ain't, he ain't, he ain't. No. Yeah, no. McIntyre. Eh, he won't win clean either because they can't they can't have him win clean against Drew because that would destroy Drew's entire shit he has going on. So mm-hmm. we're gonna have Imperium get involved and it's going to be a cheat oh, win yeah. and he wins. Huh. Yes. Other than that, Riddle comes out and gets his leg broke again or his foot foot broke again. <laughs> I mean because if Riggle comes out during this match, that's the only time uh, Orton can come out and take on Giovanni, which there is no connection for Randy to get involved in this match other than because of RK Bro. Yeah. That's the only thing. So there's only two points he can return. Either that match to help to help uh, Matt Riddle or in the Battle Royale where he inevitably screws LA Knight over. And I'm kind of favoring that one. <laughs> I don't know, we'll see. But yeah. It won't if it won't be it won't be clean by any means. There'll be plenty of shady shit going on. Alright. We only have a few more matches. Then we have the WWE Women's Championship match. The SmackDowns. Asuka versus Bianca Belair versus Charlotte Flair. Yeah, that's that's pretty much how this match will go to crickets. It will just be nothing but crickets because the match will be boring. I mean, I'm gonna throw it out there that Charlotte Flair walks away with it, and you're just doing it to piss me off. That's all your fucking awesome. thing. No, I, I don't think Bianca gets it again. Yeah, she's 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 Bianca's kind of becoming she, she's kind of becoming a baby, and as sad as it is, I don't I think they it, no uh, her no business. yeah they t- they hinted about that too, um, but they don't they don't want her to uh, get a heel persona because of how much all the baby face stuff that she has going on. Um, Asuka is an amazing wrestler. She just does not have, she does not have the ability to talk on the mic, which is a huge downfall for a champion. One word to rebuttal all this. Gunther. He's an IC champ. Not Asuka is a champ. Yeah, she's the champ. She's the champ. Asuka is more entertaining to watch than Gunther. Mm-hmm. I was, yes, I agree. But how often I, I don't see her. I keep saying I don't watch SmackDown enough to say, oh, I haven't seen her. I keep forgetting that. I don't watch SmackDown. The I clips keep, are all I, on Hulu. It's an hour long. <laughs> I, should, I should watch the Hulu recap. Only in so parts. I don't know if I don't know. It's just she's she is set up to win. They've missed they've missed the mark, I think, with her. Well, they missed it years ago when they allow Charlotte to beat her. I think it's going to happen again. No, I I think the miss is going to come in play, and Charlotte's going to take the miss to the face, and Belair may hit the KOD, only for Oscar to throw. Or do something to get rid of Bianca and take the pin. And it 
protects Bianca, keeps her looking strong. It protects Charlotte, and it protects Asuka, so everyone wins. But Asuka's walking away as the winner. She's going to have not a long reign, but she will have a longer reign than recent. And everything's kind of backing that up, too. I don't want Bianca to win. We all know how I fucking feel about Charlotte. I don't like Charlotte like you don't like Gunther. <laughs> Probably more. I yeah. I, I, if she wasn't Flair's daughter, she would not be somebody in the WWE. More likely, no. Hundred percent. She has. She's boring as fuck to watch. Her movements over the past, actually, her movements since since the since the pandemic, where they had no crowd and they had to rely very heavily on like making sure the theatrics were perfectly done, the movements were perfectly done. Charlotte Flair looks very... Um, stiff. Not stiff? Like, no, Lita was stiff. <laughs> she just looks like she's she's cashing in a paycheck to roll. And that's cool, like, there's somebody that already does that, Lesnar, but Lesnar comes out and he's very adamant that I'm here for the money. I'm here to be paid. Mm-hmm. That's all I care for. Charlotte Flair is, I yeah. love this business. I grew up in this business. Woo, woo. I'm the best woman ever. I'm 14 time champ. So, you know, that's stupid. But, I, yeah. Charlotte is useless. And she, she is. I mean, every match she has had. I can pull it up. I can look at mo- uh, moments where you can see her pulling off her stupid DDT or even her figure four lock into a, an eight. Like, it doesn't look clean. It's not a flawless transition. And for somebody who has that lineage, that pedigree, that reputation that she covets so much, mm-hmm. she should be the best of the best. She should look the best of the best. And unfortunately, she does not. And you cannot blame it on, oh, it's her opponent. No, because she's gone up against Bianca Belair, and she did not look great. She's gone up against Becky. She did not look great. She has not looked great in many, many, many years. In many, many moons, she has not looked great. Well, she'll have her chance when she gets the title back. She won't, but that's cute that you think that. (laughs) And you're only doing that because you want to piss me off. No, I would say that she's going to win it. No, you don't. It's just a bonus that it pisses you off at the same time. You don't believe that. Mm hmm. I do. No, you don't. Don't lie to me. Yes, I do. I don't appreciate it. (laughs) All right. This next match could very well lead to a 3P as well. I hope it doesn't. I'm sick of seeing him. He's boring. But Seth freaking Rollins versus Finn Balor. Who who do you think is boring? Finn? Finn. It's boring. He's not entertaining to watch anymore. No, it's he's become a crybaby. He But Judgment Day's whole gimmick. I know. But it's more it's I don't know. The, and then the thing last night with him and Priest. Priest trying to cash in. He he took his time. So, I don't know. I mean, I get it. He has the match, trying to sell it, whatever. I'm over Finn. Finn is not what Finn used to be. Mm-hmm. He talks too much, and when he does talk, it doesn't make any sense. Because so. you can't understand him? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. No, I, I can understand him. It's just, it's just, just that he make, says... Just want to make sure. Just want to double check it. Okay. No. Shit that he says is just annoying. Yeah. I mean, it's just... It's it's so interesting because the last time we talked about Seth versus Finn, I mentioned off the cuff saying, oh, well, this has been seven years in the making, and you just fucking shit on that. Look how much they've mentioned that. Oh, that. I know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I know. Seven years in the making. Fuck cares. Cool. Great. Grand. Wonderful. It's not fucking... doesn't matter. And if Finn wins, Damien's cashing in. 100%. That is so. Damien will cash in. Priest will cash in. 
and it will be it'll it will solidify two things it will the demise that one of them's leaving very likely finn and they're going to use well you hold a grudge over seven years and you still couldn't get it done more the whole yeah but now you hold the the shortest world title twice for one minute and one day will be the two yeah. shortest so i also don't think finn's going to win but if finn does the fallout will be priest cashing in on finn i don't think it'll be a successful cash in i think priest will try yeah. finn will break it up they'll go at it like i said money in the bank right now it's heavily rumored or speculated that the men's will be a successful cash and the women's will be a failed so i think and this would also be a perfect night for eo sky to it's cash high. in and lose with the uh the briefcase or lose the match and i think this would be a perfect night for priest to cost uh finn the match mm. and if he doesn't cost him the match he will beat finn when finn wins but i see seth rollins walking out because they're still trying to build up the the reputation of the World Heavyweight Championship. Mm. However, I saw something interesting on TikTok today where it talked about um, Monday Night Raw has became Judgment Day. There is nothing impactful going on on Monday Night Raw that's not tied to Judgment Day. And granted, that's the whole fucking point of the faction. But you have Rhea just fucking ripping through the black lessening women's division. You have the Priest kind of just there causing chaos and turmoil for Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. You have Dirty Dom. He exists. Uh, and you have Finn Balor who's being the biggest bitch in the world right now. But everything's tied to them. The world heavyweight side to Finn. Uh, Dirty Dom has the North American NXT title. Rhea has the women's. Priest has the money in the bank. Like everything revolves around them. Mm -hmm. So, but if if Priest gets involved before the end of the match, Sami Zayn's going to come out. I firmly believe that to kind of make an equalizer and help uh, Seth escape with the title. Still get like a clean win esque finish win over Finn, and then just escaping with Sammy or thanks mm -hmm. to Sammy. Um, but Finn, if Priest does not interfere or interject himself at all, and Finn wins, Priest will interject, interject himself and become the new world heavyweight and then we're going to see the, the either the demise of judgment day which won't happen because it, as a fucking annoying as they are and we both want them to just kind of disappear they ain't going anywhere anytime soon so they're they're going to have a implosion between finn and priest we already know it's been two months in the making now so we'll see Yeah, I take, I mean, I take Seth walking away with this one. Walking out with it. One way or another, yeah. And then we have the final match of the night. This will for sure be the match of the night, like the final match of the night. Tribal War Fair. Or Tribal. Trial by Combat. Tribal. Tribal Combat? Tribal Combat. Tribal Combat. Nowhere does it say that in this. Great. Thanks. Nice. Thanks, just wanted to know if I was saying it right. Jerks. Tribal Und Combat for the Undisputed WWE Universal yeah. Championship and recognition as Tribal Chief. So, Jey Uso versus Roman Reigns. I've seen a lot of speculations on this. And I love all of them. <laughs> we'll just say that. I love all There's of them. a lot. So much. So, that begs the question. Who will win? Or are you like so many others? And say no contest slash draw. I think Roman wins. 
I, uh, only thing I wonder or curious about is if there's any legends that are coming out. If Rikishi makes an, you know, an appearance, obviously the rock is always thrown out. There is another one. Um, you can't act. It's true. I, I mean, I don't know. There, there's a whole strike going on. Not, he can't, I mean, he can't act either. He's kind of punch it. <laughs> I don't know. I, this one's hard because I, there's so many different storylines, speculations, everything else that can happen that are out there. And they they all sound good. There's Umaga's it, son coming into play because mm-hmm. he's been quote in contact. There's been two Fatu brothers coming into play. I don't remember both of them coming into play. And they have like a fucking million cousins. So then there's also Rakishi himself and The Rock, but I don't know. My well, guess is that there is no, there's no outside interference as far as or distraction from any legends or anybody else coming out. I think it's just straight up. He, but set the uh, not set. Reigns has not had a single clean win since he's became tribal chief. Oh no, said Solo's there. I'm not saying anything about Solo not being there. Okay. Well, you said no. Wait, I'm just talking know. more like Rakishi. I, I was talking more of like distractions as far as uh, anybody outside like Rakishi or like that. Um, I don't know how far out Jimmy is or how hurt he is. If they'll even be around or if they'll show up or anything. I don't know what his injury is. <laughs> um, I mean, I think I think Reigns just from his beach J down and walks away with it. I it's one of those things. I don't. I don't think. My speculation. I said this before. I even read and watch all the, all the rumors and everything. But um, I'm also trying to Google how long he he'll be out for. Um, oh, Jimmy. Yeah, it doesn't have any. It doesn't have any. Uh, estimated and they're keeping it very hush hush so they're not saying if this is real or just a uh, story mm-hmm. uh, I mean he did just come back too but I said this before that a J ever face against Roman Reigns this definitely like it has to end with J because it started with Jay, it has to end with Jay. That's how the storyline needs to work properly. Um, mm. But I don't. I don't think Jay's gonna win. I also don't think uh, Reigns is gonna win either. I think we're gonna have either outside interference, whether it's Jimmy, Umaga, Son, Fatu, cousins, Solo, whatever. I think we're gonna have something happen where. Maybe double count out, drop double draw. I don't, neither one of them's gonna get a win. It's going to be a no contest. So where Jace super protected, and then Reigns still comes out as chief and champion because they had to protect. They had to per, protect Jay. They cannot have him get squashed. And don't forget, I was right at money bank. They have to. They had to stick with the storyline. It makes sense to have Jay protected. So to have a no contest where he still put on a hell of a show. Maybe neither man got up till 10. Uh, and kind of just builds Jay up as a true main event. But it also keeps Roman super protected as well. Where he didn't lose. But he also didn't win. Um, and Jay did pin Roman. So... There's a lot to go off of here, and again, like you say, there's there are so many variables mm-hmm. from additional family members getting involved, legends getting involved. Uh, the elders have to come to play. I would think so, but well, because that's how this all started. I... Was the mm-hmm. elders told me I have to? Yeah, that they have no faith in you now. So yeah, someone's gonna show up. But is it going to be Roman Jay's grandpa slash great grandpa, whoever was that uh, that WrestleMania so many years ago where he gave the lay to Roman, 
I know that's not what it's called, but the red lay or whatever it's called that he wears. So it it can go so many ways, but my my instinct is to say it's a no contest, neither win, neither lose. So everyone's protected and it makes sense for a story arc too. I would say he, Jay should go after the U.S. title, but sounds like they're building up a supposed feud of L.A. Knight to somehow be part of the U.S. title picture. But also with this with this match, they have to figure out who the tribal chief is. If there's no like, contest or winner, well then, then you won't have one. No, they would still have it. Reigns wouldn't uh, vacate it at all. It's just like the championship. He doesn't mm-hmm. lose the championship. He doesn't lose the title of Tribal Chief Theater. My list just came out hard there. <laughs> <laughs> I heard it. I felt my tongue stay on my back teeth. <laughs> so him him having no contest, he, he doesn't have to vacate the title. He doesn't vacate the title of Tribal Chief. There he is again. God damn it. Tribal Chief. English is hard. Where is Lance? I didn't have this issue when he was on the episode. I don't think, I don't think it's gonna work though. I think it's there's gonna be a there's gonna be a winner, and I think Roman will be the one. I mean, so he can clearly everyone, prove to be tribal chief, and well, everyone's saying that this has to lead to Roman versus Cody at WrestleMania 40, uh, but this is also. Reigns' last match for quite some time because he's not on the match card at all for payback uh, or whatever's after payback in Survivor Series. He's not on the match for the next three months. Nowhere on the card at all. Like, no advertising, no marketing for upcoming events. He's not on any of it. Mm. So he'll be taking, going from, quote, full-time right now back to part-time be really annoying because then we'll have to hear and he make his return <laughs> every smack right. he's, he's returning oh so funny i don't know i i i can't see reigns winning but also the only thing i winning. the only thing i don't like is that he's he's racking up these days as champion but then takes three months off and then gets those like but, but that's how they that's how they have to do it. Because they can't have him destroy the entire roster. Cause then the whole roster looks weak as shit. And it's like, well, what's the point of this title at all? And the title is starting very much so to lose its reputation because of this hostage situation and the fact that he has it and he's gone for months at a time, comes back, wrestles a couple premier live events, gone for months at a time, like it's a joke. Yeah. And maybe they're intentionally doing this where the world heavyweight title can be a focal point. Cool. But when you're building someone up to destroy a 1400 day reign, you you should probably put some more stock in them rather than say, well, we built them up for the first year and a half. Now we're just kind of bunny hopping around. So. Oh, yeah. No, I get it. I also read this is where this was another match that technically Orton could come back and face against Roman Reigns because they have not faced off for the title yet. Doesn't make sense, but I have seen that one floating around. Yeah, that one the that universe. one doesn't make sense for you know for him to come back at that that one. No, the other two that we talked about makes yeah. sense. The Battle Royale and then Battle Royale makes the most sense. <laughs> I think so. I'm just saying right now if it fucking happens i'm telling you while we're live you're like you only go watch thursday's episode fucking called it <laughs> Hold all you motherfuckers early on i'm still going with la night winning it even if he does come back man you are just piss everybody off because why not <laughs> why the fuck it's not? true true but, i mean overall this this is not an impressive match card very lackluster which is sad because this is the big like part of the big four big yep. reviews and there's nothing nothing impactful outside of reigns and reigns and uso match like nothing else like oh yeah i really i really want to watch it this has to 
this eye catching there's a lot of good matches on it there's nothing maybe it's because it's taking the, place in detroit i don't know when's the austin theory match it's not on here it's gonna be on friday night smackdown is it friday okay it was supposed to be on SummerSlam, and then when they started that tournament like on week two they said and the smackdown before SummerSlam. okay so they changed it too because this match card originally, I think, had like 10 or 12 matches on it, and they pulled several already. That's why it's like, well... Because I'm also curious if if What's-His-Name was actually supposed to be there instead of Ray. And what's his name? More help than what's the guy his that name? he fought on the fucked his... Uh, beating because Ray couldn't continue. Oh. The LWO. Um... I'm just gonna sit here and bask. I this. can't. Fuck you. I can't think of his name. Search with an S. Santos. <laughs> Samsonite. <laughs> it's way off. <laughs> Samsonite. <laughs> I love that one. I don't know. Santos. I can't remember. You were right with the first name. I was waiting for you to finish it. Escobar. Escobar. <laughs> yeah, so I don't. I'm curious if he's even supposed to be there to fight Theory since Ray smacked his head. Well, I mean, yes, that's true. I think it was supposed to originally be Ray versus AJ, so where AJ can have another legend underneath his belt that he beat. So if that's the case. It will be a squash match on Friday to kind of say, nope, you're definitely not ready. Sit your ass back down. Because Santos is not, he's, he's not ready. But I've no. also read that he will be the one to take the title away from Theory. So where the LWO has, has traction, again, wouldn't make much fucking sense. There is no LWO. I mean, it's, just, it's there. That, they that's have t-shirts it. and merch. That where are the other two the tag team at? I haven't seen those guys ever, and I don't know how long it since ever. the LWO was formed. No, no I see haven't them. seen them since then. You see them, they just have not had a match at all. Yeah, I at I've all. seen Santos and Vega and Ray, obviously. Yeah, but other than that, I haven't seen the, the other two. Yeah, those the those tag teams were supposed to be like not dominable, but they were supposed to be part of the actual roster and compete for the titles fairly soon and shit happened with them. I don't yeah. even know what happened. Like we saw them when they're down in Puerto Rico. And yeah, they're always interfering. They're not ever part of a match. Yeah, I mean they had to, they had to be at Puerto Rico because that's when they, they brought out everybody. Yeah. You know that that's when they did their throwbacks to and everything like that. So it's just cool, but like that's it. And not like the LWO is a huge faction that really did anything anyways. But it's just, well, like, it, I hate that the, they're using it and not doing anything with it. Well, I hate that. Okay, so the whole, the whole original point where Eddie created the LWO was to bring recognition and light to the Hispanic community. Yeah. That was, that was the big thing. They were very public about it. And now... It definitely feels like it's just a gimmick writer of, mm -hmm. oh, well, let's do something to bring attention to us. Like Eddie Guerrero will always bring tons of attention to the WWE because everybody loves and appreciates Eddie Guerrero for what he did and what he was and what he is. LWO, again, Eddie's creation, perfect. What else has LWO actually done if you remove the whole Eddie factor? No, what's nothing. the point of the LWO being created at all? Like, Ray created it for what? Like, it was I just an could not to, tell to you, Eddie. Yeah. I mean, I think another thing too was a big thing with uh, going to Puerto Rico and having and having the the ability to bring out Savio Vega, you know, and have that throwback for him. It was, I think, it's what a big thing was was for that one. And um, where has that ball gone? It has not Nowhere. left Puerto Rico. It's not going to go. No. And that's, I think that was a big thing for just the Puerto Rico show. Which, being the first one they've stupid. had down there. Which is stupid. 
Like, it I is, but I mean, if you look at it, but it's, it's, you should like they had a lot of traction. Everybody was really hyped for LWO the first like month or two, and now it's mm-hmm. kind of like it's like the tag teams in it. What? what yeah, exactly. What's going on? Where are they? And then the fact that now you have Carlito re-signed with WWE, and apparently he was supposed to be part of LWO, and I haven't seen or heard anything about him now in a month. And he like, anything they happened before. Yeah. Well, they actually signed him, and they had he was signed up for like three, two or three uh, indie shows, and they had to pull his name from it because he said he can't be there. He re-signed with WWE. So, I mean. Yeah. I, don't know. I will say this though, because I've been seeing it a lot, and it's so fucking annoying. It is. Have you seen the interviews with Vince Russo as of like the last month? No, Vince Russo is annoying as shit, so I don't listen to him. Yeah, he is. So is Jim Cornette. Yes, and Dave Meltzer. And it's kind of like some non uh, Basically, everybody, all current day wrestlers and fans don't give a shit about those three. Mm-hmm. They care more for Dave Meltzer. But they're all just kind of fucking annoying. But I was yeah. watching something. It's Vince Russo on, on a podcast episode. And he was, he was asked, how do you feel about today's production? Like, how do you feel about it? He goes, oh, it sucks. None of this makes sense. The stories are garbage. There's no real buildup or storylines anymore. Back in my day when I was a story writer, we focused primarily on story. and We know we had a, a few matches in that storyline. Now it's a few story parts in all matches. Mm-hmm. Which isn't really entirely true. It's a very skewed view because if you go back to like Austin and Rock, they had tons of matches in the storyline. But you're also talking these guys work 365 days a year. Whereas now they work maybe 160. Still mm-hmm. a lot. Like, still fucking a lot to do what they're doing. Yeah. But he just goes and he, he tears everything apart. He gets asked about AEW. Says the same thing. Asked about New Japan. He's like, oh, while well, New Japan is fun to watch, I don't get the hype of it. It's It's too quiet for me. It's too out of touch with reality it's too out of touch with uh the actual industry it i wouldn't even consider that professional wrestling even though that's the pw in new japan pro wrestling mm-hmm. um but again it's true so he's fucking stupid and then you had jim Cornette doing the same shit back in my day like not to trigger anybody but you want to hear some boomer ass shit right there? Those two. Mm. And you have Dave Meltzer. He's been, ever since Will Ospreay went off against uh, Kenny Omega at AEW, he's been on a lot of episodes talking about his five star rating. And it's like, oh, I don't give them out too much. It, 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 there's a lot of four stars, but if I give him like a four, that's really like a five. I just, I was missing one thing. It's, it's, you, one, you sound like you're contradicting your entire metric that you somehow came up with. Yeah. Two, nobody gives a fuck. Mm -hmm. Nobody but you. And then you even have Will Ospreay who came out and I think he had like 16 five-star matches. He has the most. And he was interviewed by Chris something. Very big in the professional world too. Jericho? No. No. Not a wrestler. He was asked uh, about his five star matches, and he goes, "Oh, yeah, cool." Like he doesn't care. And then when <laughs> he was asked, "Well, don't you think that should matter?" And like your bargaining, he goes, "I mean, I guess I could use it, but it is what it is." See, no one gives a shit about this five star, and yet it's yeah. bread and butter for the wrestling world. I don't know what to say because I, I do think that also. Uh, did you watch Great American Bash? Some of it. Some I think we talked a little bit. <clears throat> so I. The little uh, promos or whatever you want to call it between Dragon Lee and Dominic. Mm-hmm. 
think they're going to set up something for Dragon Lee to take that title from Dom on NXT. I don't know. He's supposed to have a ring. <laughs> I mean, he can, but I think it's it's going to be something along the lines of Dragon Lee trying to take it from him. Um, watching watching him. It's uh. Join the LWO Randy Rankin Bash good. Good. I think it'd be uh. It'd be cool to see what he's got because he's his match he had wasn't bad, but it is NXT. So, but I mean, Dragon Lee's well seasoned in in wrestling. Yeah. So we'll see what happens with that one. But that's an NXT I have to follow, and I don't watch NXT. I watch it periodically, but they're like wrap this whole thing up because we've been seeing the vignettes and promotions for three weeks now, maybe a month. So we've seen Bobby Lashley, singly Bobby Lashley, meet up with Street Profits and go down to NXT to meet up with Carmelo Hayes and his bodyguard. So Carmelo's going to drop the title, be pushed to the main event. However, this latest promotion where we saw Street Profits with Bobby Lashley and um, Lashley saying, well, we all need kind of <clears throat> need dressed apart. I'm choking on something. When you dress for the part, they all kind of like stop and kind of got like that dirty, dirty look, dirty glare towards Dawkins. Mm -hmm. And like, I get it, but I also feel like that's a minor setup for the Street Profits to split and for Montez to be able to go against Dawkins and have a singles run. Where he's like, you're not dressed apart. You're you're too much of a jokester. You're too lighthearted about all this stuff. This is serious business. Gets pushed out as the uh, hurt business, or whatever they're going to call this faction. But that's like long what? foreshadow. Did you see what they did after they looked at him, though? Yeah, I saw, but still. When they brought they brought suits out for him yeah, to put I on. I, I saw it too. So that that okay. one little they're very okay, good I, like. I didn't know if Hulu covered that part or not. Yes, Hulu covered all of it. So would TikTok. <laughs> See more on TikTok than I do on Hulu. <laughs> but it's just it's I don't think Carmel small little cues, small little yeah. cues that set up story. Oh yeah, so that's what the whole fucking bloodline has become is facial cues, reactions. Mm -hmm. But Carmelo's yeah, going, I, and he's I don't I don't think Carmelo is going to. Why? Uh, you don't I was fucking watching. Why the fuck do I care? I was reading about it. I read that they don't think they're they're going to join yet. They don't think they're ready. But who knows? Then I also saw that's the same time where I read about Bianca possibly yeah. joining, but they don't want her because of the whole heel, heel persona. They don't want her to have that. Um, I haven't seen MVP around very much at all. Good. So that I haven't no seen him. Loss. Uh, Omos also has a TikTok following though as well. I don't know if you've seen any of his. He's got some random guy. Not yet. I'm him. sure I will after yep. after this. So some random guy is challenging him in an airport, and then comes to his house and takes a it's a baseball bat or a golf club or something, bashes it out of his front his uh, driver's side window, and I, I it's it's very weird. I I haven't caught all of it yet, but it's it's very weird. And okay. obviously, you know, Omos has that that deep voice and you can't really understand anything he's saying just because he's yelling the entire time. But it's it's very, very weird. And why they're doing it, I don't know, because he almost hasn't been around for a while. Nope, he hasn't. I'm OK with that. He's not interesting to watch either. Big guys are very hit and miss. We've talked about mm -hmm. hit and miss. So uh, we'll we'll definitely have to cover. I mean, we'll do a post. We may do a post show. I'm gonna be honest because I already have videos or uh, podcasts, podcast episodes releasing next week. Mm. I'm not gonna interrupt those. The two parter, but we'll see. Maybe I will. I don't know. Depends on how I'm feeling. If I'm feeling froggy, probably not. I don't know. Yeah, I was going somewhere with that until my brain just went nothing. All right. <laughs> Good shit, Logan. But anyway, so again, uh, we are going to watch this. 
sorry, I'm gonna I'm gonna say this definitively for me because I am not going to speak on Roggle's behalf because he's he's kind of flaky. He's like a croissant. It's flaky. Seven. Okay. Wait. We're gonna watch SummerSlam live August fifth. Uh, and we're going to uh, attempt to stream it. And it's going to be a live reaction type thing, I guess, would be the best way to put it properly. Uh, but you can tune in and watch SummerSlam with us side by side and see what our predictions are. If we're right, if we're wrong, if Gunther is still a dumbass champion. <laughs> if, if Sig is right with the Tribal Chief. Or Roggle's right with Charlotte Flair, which he's not. He's like, he's not. He's not right. But you just don't want it. I really don't want it. And it makes no sense for Charlotte to to get it. Makes no sense. Doesn't doesn't make sense for Gunther to be a champion either. But yet hey, he is. Hey, take that logic and shove it up your ass kindly. Thank you. <laughs> but so tune in. I mean, that's in yeah. two days when this launches. But yeah, tune in. There's English there. Shut up. <laughs> Speech impediment. So it's going to be a good time. Other than that, Roggle will for sure be streaming Thursdays. <laughs> yeah. I I, I, Thursday. If you have not, if you haven't caught the last couple of weeks, Sig has had some uh, technical mental issues and not able to make his stuff Fine. work nor do anything else. Battle net. My um, stuff works fine. That yeah. on that uh, everybody else that we you know the other lance that we play with he's he's not having any issues he plays just fine when yeah, his electricity doesn't go out so i mean the fact that you apparently had to turn off your security measures and everything else the moat you have going on around your house was causing issues so it's so good to know that you uh you can play now hopefully yeah, you can play we'll today. see I just yeah, sure. yeah. I'm playing every yeah. I'm playing Come the game Thursday. every game. I'm, I'm, Thursday, I'm gonna try to stream on your phone. I'm gonna try to stream on Thursday. Like during the daytime. I'm gonna stream myself playing Call of Duty. I'll text you, like turn your fucking Twitch on. Look. I always turn my Twitch on when I see you. <laughs> Normally. It's not true. So it's kick. Somebody it's has to try around. somebody has to try and double your double your viewership. You can't double zero. It's mathematically not possible. You don't know that. I I, I do know that actually. I, oh. I I received very high grades like A's all the time in math. <laughs> not a mathematician. So, this is twenty twenty three, so two plus two could equal five. Tune in Thursday and see if Sig makes it. See if Sig stream. Bye bitch. Thursday.